So, 2022, huh? That was certainly a year. Well, I'm sure a lot of us would like to forget that this year ever happened. There are some things that are worth remembering, like video games. A lot of great games came out this year, and I'd like to talk about a few of them. However, this is a list of the best games I played this year. That means we've also got a few games from years past that I finally got around to playing that I'd like to talk about. Without further ado, let's give this year a fond farewell with the best games I played in 2022. Number 5. I actually reviewed Metal Hell Singer when it came out, so I'm going to try and not reiterate what I said in that video. But holy crap guys, this game is excellent. You play as a demon woman armed with an arsenal of demonic weaponry who must shoot to the beat of the music in order to defeat her enemies. The gameplay, while simple on the surface, has enough complexity to keep it engaging for the length of the game. It's also just inherently satisfying staying on beat and entering your flow state. On top of this is the game's incredible score. It's a total crime that this game didn't win best score at the Game Awards, because one, it's phenomenal, and two, it forms the entire core and soul of the game. Overall, this is a fantastic game that I recommend to everyone. It's on Game Pass too, so it's pretty easy to get your hands on. Number 4. I could not escape the Final Fantasy XIV memes back at the beginning of 2022. I don't think anybody could. It was everywhere. However, after having finally played it and given it over 50 hours of my time, I can say that the memes are well deserved. This game is fucking incredible. This is my first MMO, and apparently I chose a really, really good one to start with. This game is absolutely massive and filled with content. Dungeons, raids, character customization. It's also expansive, and sometimes it feels endless. The best part of it is that most of it is completely free. You don't have to pay a dime until you're a few expansions deep and know if you actually like the game or not. On top of this is the fantastically told story. Sure, it's boring as shit sometimes, but those high moments when everything clicks together are so, so worth it. I can't wait to get back into the world of Eorzea once I find more time. I technically haven't even beaten A Realm Reborn yet. Number 3 What can I say about Super Metroid that hasn't already been said? This is one of those games that changed everything. This game, along with Castlevania Symphony of the Night, formed an entire genre that defines a lot of gaming even now. It's a massive, beautiful, atmospheric game that is still fun even almost 30 years later. I played this game on a real Super Nintendo, curled up with a blanket, watching the sharp pixels on my classic CRT, and I had a total blast. My only complaint with this game is that it does have a lot of that old school difficulty, but that's to be expected from a 30 year old game. Overall, I loved my time with Super Metroid and I would recommend it to anyone interested in retro games. Number two. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is special to me because I played through the entire game with my girlfriend. We had played the other Xenoblade games leading up to this, so this conclusion, at least I think it's a conclusion, to the trilogy was highly anticipated. I have to say, it didn't disappoint. Well, this isn't the best Xenoblade game in my opinion, it's still a phenomenal game with one of the best stories of the year. It will absolutely annihilate your heartstrings at the end. However, that's not all that's great about this game. It also features one of the most refined battle systems in the entire Xenoblade series, a massive and beautiful world to explore, and tons of complexity that lies within its systems. Further elevating this game is a phenomenal soundtrack. Yet again, robbed by the Game Awards. I think my favorite thing about this game has to be the characters. These are some of the most well-written and lovable characters I've ever encountered in an RPG, and I won't be forgetting them anytime soon. The Xenoblade franchise has a bright future ahead, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Honorable Mentions Before we get to number one, I wanted to shout out a few games that didn't quite make the list, but still deserve to be talked about. First up is AI The Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. I didn't manage to finish this game, but I streamed quite a bit of it and loved every second. My second favorite visual novel of all time is the first AI of the Somnium Files, so I'm looking forward to finally finishing this mind boggler of a sequel. Next is Neon White. This is another game that I didn't manage to finish this year, but I really want to return to it. This is a speedrunning focused first person shooter where you use playing cards as your guns. Throwing away the cards activates a special ability pertaining to that card. This creates a ton of gameplay depth and makes every level feel extremely fun to race through. This game is another one with a fantastic soundtrack and lovable characters. Totally recommended. The final honorable mention is the Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series collection. 
This collection of two remastered Klonoa games was a total surprise to me. I've always been interested in Klonoa, but I didn't expect I would love these games so much. These are now two of my favorite platformers ever released. Not only is the gameplay tight and satisfying, but the music is phenomenal, and the way the games tell their stories is nothing short of magical. Please check out Klonoa if you can. Here's hoping for Klonoa 3. Number 1! You knew this was gonna be number one. I mean, come on. It's Elden fucking Ring. This game is a masterpiece. One of the ones that we only get every couple of years that defines the medium of video gaming itself. But not only is it an artistic triumph and a testament to the power of gaming, it's also an extremely fun and enjoyable romp through a massive and beautiful world. There are so many things I can list off that I love about this game. The gameplay, the build diversity, the world, the art style, the story, the music. There's so much to love. While it is brought down by a slightly disappointing second half, I can still say with confidence that this is the best game I played in 2022, and I would recommend that everyone give it a shot. So that was my list of the best games I played in 2022. While in real life this may have not been the perfect year, it was at least rather good in gaming. Here's looking forward to 2023. Lots of exciting games coming out next year. I'm going to try to get videos out on them as much as possible, but we'll see what happens. If you like this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot. My name is Nate Paradox. Have a good night, and stay wicked.